You ready to start recording? Yeah. Just kidding. It's been recording. I know. I can see the red light. For the past half an hour. Wow. Is this a good distance for my face? Do you it think again? so? Is this a good distance for my face? Yeah, it seems to be fine. Just don't do anything crazy. Okay. No. <laughs> Uh, Eva's got her own microphone now. Yeah, because mine was crazy last time and definitely didn't sound as good as yours did. It didn't sound as good, but it's but it's still. It also fine. had to do with the microphone handler. What? Well, the quality. It also just was the setup that we had, but now we've got both microphones running into the camera instead, there which hopefully go. just removes. And we're very professional with our branding. Yes, shout out to uh, Michaela. I'm Michaela. Anyone? What? I'm Michaela. I'm Michaela. Could be any Michaela out there. But there's one specific one that we're thinking of right now. You know who you are. Not Sean Hicklin's sister. Nope. It's funny. (laughs) Funny story about the Hicklins. (laughs) Their dad is called Michael. Mm -hmm. And then Sean's middle name is Michael. And his sister is called Michaela. Obsessed. Spelled Michael A. Yeah, that's how you spell Michaela. No, uh, some people spell M A K A L Y M A K A Y L A. It's like Michaela. <laughs> Welcome to Consistently Inconsistent. Welcome. My name is Patty G. I'm Eva G. Oh, and together we're the G's. Mr. and Mrs. Oh my G. My gosh, did you hear that? Yeah. I wonder if they probably not, but that was somebody was just drifting, Tokyo drifting. <sighs> And um, what do you think of our new little setup recording? Guys, um, we have no idea what we're going to talk about today. So Patrick's uh, just bluffing. Well, no, like, come on. I'm just introducing them to the show. Come on. Come on. Be serious. Let's go, Take it bro. easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Sponsor, today we're Take sponsored by easy. Tim Hortons. Oh, I wish we were. Give me some honey crudders, Tim Hortons. I'll come work for you. <laughs> Okay, so here's a question for Eva. Should we talk about our restless hearts? Well, come on, let me ask you my question okay. first. Okay, why do you keep saying come on? Okay, go ahead. Um, so my question to you is... <laughs> uh, no, I'm just trying to think of the way to phrase the question. Okay. I do have a question for you. Okay, I'm just going to start blabbing. And... Um, if the listeners, viewers need clarification, they can leave a comment below. What do you think of that? <laughs> okay. He's a weirdo. Tough crowd. I don't understand what you're trying to Do you to think say. I could do stand-up comedy? No. <laughs> Definitely not. I watched a video of a guy called Kelly Wakasa. Shout out to Kelly Wakasa. And you shout out everyone you talk about. That's the... Show? That's... What? No, that's what we do on the show. Okay, right. So and those to. are my socks. You gave them to me. And <laughs> broke um, and couldn't afford my own. Kelly Wakasa, <laughs> and he was doing a 30 day challenge trying to post something for his bucket list. And one of his bucket list items was doing stand up comedy. And it was the most uncomfortable thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> it was oh, uh, no. the poor fun. Nobody laughed at him. Aww. Like, not even pity laughs. Aww. Yeah. I was a bit, uh, it was a bit. Some things on your bucket list should just stay there, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like, it made me, because I've always been like, maybe I could. But when I watched I was like, there's no way. No, I'm sorry. You yeah, just well, have I'm to be very well prepared, I think. Uh, yeah, like any funny. of them will tell you that. Like, you think they're just, like, improv it, but they're actually just no, so organized. Some, yeah. yeah, well, some, but maybe after a few years. But it just, it takes there. a certain kind of funny person, yeah. I think, to do stand-up comedy. Okay, my question to you is, oh, yeah. you are married to a Canadian. True. And Almost a year. When we first got married... It's kind of to do with your thing of restlessness. But when we first got, or not when we first got married, but when we started dating, you obviously knew the pitfalls of dating an international being. What do you mean by pitfalls? Like you knew that like that would come with costs. Like my family would be, like if we got married, or if like, I mean we did get married, but like <laughs> at the beginning of the relationship, then you're thinking in your process of discernment, or in more secular terms, do I want to be with Decision this guy? Making, um, and yeah, you're like, okay, this if I get married to this guy, his family's going to be in Canada, 
And so either we'll we're just going to be going there. we're just going to be apart from his family, or if we go to there, then we're going to be apart my, from my family. So like, what? How much of a, a a factor was that in your process of of our dating? Hmm, good question. Um, I mean, I think if you were a very logical person and you wanted like to have your life a bit more mapped out you would have worried about that but I was just initially trying to get to know you and like being like you know do I actually fancy him hmm? <laughs> trying to work out what was that? do I actually fancy you or not took a while but I got there anyway Um, now I fancy the pants up yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to remind you this is a PG that is PG yeah, don't take my pants off <laughs> no that's not I'm not gonna take your <laughs> pants off <laughs> Gosh. Jeez. Anyway, um, but it was something that I thought about, but no, I didn't really think about it an awful lot. Like I think we had talked about, like obviously when you're discerning marriage or you know thinking about marrying someone, you talk about like where you'd like to live, where you guys see yourself in the future, you know, like things like that. And maybe I guess we didn't as much in dating as we did in engagement, but I just kind of knew that I was strong willed and that I'd get my way, you know, or like that you loved me and you loved Ireland so that I I could have seen us staying here or like stop chewing into the mic um I also was just like I think I'll be happy wherever we go realistically like I having sisters in Australia I'm so aware of the fact that if something happens like they are just so far away Mm -hmm. and you can't drop everything Mm -hmm. but part of me then knows that like you can't limit yourself to being there ready in case something bad happens because can't just be impending doom the whole time mm. awaiting impending doom mm. um well like and then i found parts of it very hard to actually like i know throughout a relationship a lot i find it hard to actually comprehend like that you missed your family and like because to me you seemed happy and then in times of like sadness or anything that would be a contributing factor and then that would make your sadness more or something like that and then I would just be like why is this coming up now we're, like, we're, t- we're talking about a completely irrelevant thing to your family and you're like you just miss your family what do you mean Um. so the furthest I've lived from my family is Cork which, which to our international viewers is how far in hours four <laughs> maybe okay um four hours yes good point um but it's also like the bottom of the country for yeah, ireland pretty so, much like, the opposite side so you're like oh, the whole other side of the country yeah. but like not at all the same in canada in, yeah. our, in america be like yeah. the other side of the state really mm-hmm. <laughs> um so i had just never really experienced that other than like missing my siblings who were away but i was already i was usually surrounded by most of my family that there's too many of them to miss the other ones too greatly I don't want that to sound rude to Jen Rona, but I think that <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll be offended. When you're immersed in it, you can't spend every day missing them. Anyway, mm. so it's something that I wasn't really all that like worried about. I was like, right. if we end up in Canada, that's exciting. That's new. Okay. I'll miss my family. I'll mostly. I was mostly like, what if I lose my favorite auntie title and I'm going to miss my little people like so so hard. Yeah. Um, but you know that's life, and you can't can't have it all so it's either your family or mine sometimes and that's okay so yeah it wasn't like a deciding factor at all really for me no i think it wasn't it's, a deal breaker no not at all no and i actually was thinking about this the other day and i was like i think i am actually like 10 times cooler now that i have an international husband okay yeah i always thought that's growing why you up, did it mostly some people here of green card marriages you did it for like the coolness green card. Yeah, the going up on the cool Status. scale. Status. What's that called? Clout. Clout. You did it for clout. <laughs> for my ego. <laughs> <laughs> what is clout? Um, I think it means like fame, kind of like. That's my understanding of like clout. Huh. Yeah. But yeah, I always just thought I'd end up having to marry someone from like Nublus, which if you're from Clonus, you Shocking. understand how disappointing that is. Yeah, I know. That would be treacherous. Yeah, so... um kind of a huge win yeah and like our kids are gonna be like yeah i'm half canadian half irish like how sick is that irish 
Oh my gosh, you guys. You that's how. No, that's how it works. You can't be full. Can it full something? You can't be one hundred percent something and one hundred percent something else. You, you can. can only make up one hundred percent. Jesus was one hundred percent God, one hundred percent man. Yeah, and only He is that. No, only I am. He can be that. I am fully Canadian. Yeah. I have full Canadian citizenship, <laughs> and I have full American citizenship. I'm not just half an American, half a Canadian. Yeah, you are. No. Yeah. No. Fact. Please let us know what you think of this. Because can you be 200%? No. You can that, only be 100%. But that's not how math works. Yes, it is, bro. No. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're not getting the math part. No, that's actually not even true. Okay. You can be 200%. You can, be two, you can grow 200% in sales. That, how does that make sense? Explain that to me. <laughs> you're not sales, man. I know. I'm more than that. 100% Canadian, 100% American, part divine through the wonderful church, the Catholic, the Holy Roman Catholic. But something that is full, like, church. can't be more than like 100% of its capacity. You'd be surprised. Oh, I knew you were something hey, special. Listen, listen, you're not supposed to yell into the microphone. I just Plus, I over here. We have neighbors. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh, he's always reminding me of my neighbors. Did we tell that story last time? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, the yeah, back. Yeah. <laughs> he loves telling that story. Yeah. <laughs> Should we tell it again? No. Oh, oh. Listeners, viewers, let me tell you. <laughs> no. Listeners, viewers. No, I'm not actually. This is a no. great cup of tea. It is. It is very good. Yeah. It reminds me, a few years ago, I went home for Christmas. I think it was, I can't remember if it was my first year of that or my second year uh, or my first year of Holy Family Mission that I went home. I went home both those years for Christmas. Probably loved a different woman then. But <laughs> um, anyway, like I was saying, then um, I've totally lost my <laughs> yeah, what I was can I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, there used to be a place in Canada called David's Tea. It was a, a branch. You're going to knock that tea over yeah, there. Yeah, I just realized there. that. Yeah. Um, just put it on the thing. Fine. Thank you. Um, called David's Tea. They had lots of loose leaf teas. And from Santa, I got this really cool thing. It was a thermos. thermos? That, what? Mm. A thermos. Thermos, yeah, that's what yeah. it's called. Them. Like a travel mug. Mm. Um, thermos? And yeah. it was like a French press built into it. Ooh. So like it was, but it was for loose leaf tea. So you put the loose leaf tea in, well, you, put the hot, you put the hot water in, you let it steep. When it's ready to go, you just push down the like plastic meshy bit. And then you've got yourself a cup plastic of tea. Plastic and hot water doesn't sound very good. And, and, <laughs> and. What are you looking for? It was great. I loved it. And I got with it Irish breakfast tea. And sometimes, every now and then, I have it. It was like, it was perfect. It was like the most perfect tea I've ever had in my life. I don't know how they did it. Wow. But it just tasted so good. And Maybe um, you should get loose leaf tea. And uh, every now and then, I get a taste of it with a, with a certain, every, every other cup. Not every other cup, but. One in 15. Something like that. And this one kind of tastes like that. It tastes <gasps> like that loose leaf the tea. The perfect cup of tea. I've made it in the world in regard in accordance to the Irish standards association. Mm-hmm. Yep. I say. Yep. Um. Yeah. So. Okay. So it wasn't at all. Um. It wasn't a deal breaker. No. Nope. What's it for you? Possibly going to Canada. No, obviously not. You've loved Irish women for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy. Um. Yeah, no, I, I think that... Well, I think it was different because, especially when we started dating, then I was just, like, so set on Ireland. And I knew that, like, uh, the biggest thing for me was just that I would find a woman that was willing to go wherever God called us to go. Um, And at the beginning of a relationship then i feel like you were very much like i'm staying in ireland for my whole life yeah um, well not even like my whole life i was just like yeah my like, end destination yeah, is ireland yeah i want to settle down in ireland like i'm maximum leaving for five years and <laughs> yeah and and i was like that's fine like I, I i would accept that like if that's if that's the case and but at the same time i was like 
like we'll see if that desire changes at all and i think that's part of what the dating process is is Mm. like seeing if the other person is going to be willing to change at all Mm. and i think like that's a huge green flag if they're willing to change and not change change who they are for you no for you sorry um (laughs) but just like i think it's like people naturally change and so if they're already willing to accept like yeah like we're gonna change as we as we grow up i mean yeah if you refuse everyone who doesn't agree with your goals and won't follow you along everywhere you go like that's just so stubborn and like i feel like i was almost saying like forced you to change yeah i can totally see how you're you're always afraid of that you're always afraid of people thinking or i emotionally thinking yeah yeah he emotionally green card marriage yeah but like i love you man it's not hell yeah cheers to that (laughs) okay (laughs) um so yeah i think that my yeah my biggest thing was just like openness to where god calls us to be because i was like i don't particularly want to go back to canada Mm -hmm. i don't particularly want to stay in ireland um i want to go wherever is right you know Mm -hmm. like my favorite movie i don't know if i've ever said this on this podcast 500 days of summer no no la la land (laughs) no well that's do you know my favorite movie it's la la land no oh forest camp yeah my favorite movie is me. Forrest Gump. He talks about a lot of movies. And a huge reason is because he just like is so go with the flow, you know? Like something pops up and he's like, yeah, I'll become a ping pong champion. Mm. And then he goes to like China and is in the Olympics. And, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's the Olympics, but. No idea. I don't remember that part, to be honest. Like he just goes on such crazy adventures because he's just open to wherever. I would wherever say God, but him. wherever, you know, the wind, yeah, it takes him. <laughs> um so i just like i've always wanted to live like that that we just kind of like accept the opportunities that come and i think part of like that is somewhat problematic for me because that looked like something in my head whenever we were talking about all these things like a year or so ago and i'd be like oh my gosh like our marriage is going to be so fun so fun of traveling like we can live at a camper for a year here We can like be those veteran kids who move all the time, right. and we're still in Clonus. Yeah, <laughs> but I also have to realize that we're literally only one year into marriage, yeah. and we have the rest of our lives ahead of us. Yeah, um, but it is just that impatience of like, okay, we're next. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the world is so big; I want to see it all. It's massive, huge. Yeah, but I think we are pretty good at taking the opportunities. Like we have, we went to Norway. Yeah, and we we have to make our own opportunities. Yeah but um sometimes but like we're pretty good at just being like you know open to Mm -hmm. somebody's like hey what about this thing yeah just jump on and go for it Mm -hmm. yeah here you go hey oh sorry is that disrespectful to your culture what's the crack oh yeah i'm pretty sure you said last time that you weren't allowed to say that i'm pretty sure you told yeah probably complains about um, gives that about what i do what we talk i about actually emotionally manipulate <laughs> <What? laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 so what should we talk about <laughs> i don't know oh yeah um i was kind of thinking maybe we could talk about um why are we doing this tonight actually what we just wanted to do one yeah you were like we should do another podcast yeah it's like okay you just took it and went with it yeah it's great it's as easy as setting up a camera and going for it yeah it's true me as well you never know what the lord can inspire well, it doesn't have to always be religious no i know but one time we talked we about we could inspire vegetables. people to yeah well that was ridiculous and i inspired it accidentally good, yeah. i was yeah. going to say boats i should have said boats but um, it would have been probably really boring actually maybe what's your favorite root, root vegetable root <laughs> That's the second time you've Sorry, made fun of Sorry, I show. know I make fun of him all the time. We all know this. It's okay. My favorite root vegetable? Sweet potato. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Is that a vegetable or more? I feel like it's more of a starch. I feel like I said that exact thing <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the root vegetable episode, actually. I can't take them seriously. How should, did I get chocolate there? I feel like I should maybe go back and find that clip and play it now. Yeah. I never know how to 
tell my future self because I don't want to go through the whole the whole episode mm. and edit it. I probably should just start doing that. Put a bit more effort. Come on, Grant. Come on, Grant. Put a bit more effort into your shows. <laughs> hey, <laughs> number three. <laughs> oh, it is. Number four, strike, you're out. Yeah. Yeah. If you could play one North American sport, what would you want to play? North American? None of them. Ultimate Frisbee. <laughs> is that a North American sport? I feel yeah. like it probably is. Yeah, it's more than it is here, yeah. Yeah, that's the one I would play. Not very good at it, but I would love to play it. I have to do a lot of running. I'm not a big fan, but <laughs> I'd get over it. Yeah, it is I feel really like fun. the people who play Frisbee would be fun too. They're not your average yeah. shows, you know? Yeah. You know who plays Ultimate Frisbee? <laughs> who? Ryan Trahan. <laughs> oh, no way! Yeah. <laughs> More of a reason to want to do it. I know. That's Could so stumble sick. across him in a tournament one day. Oh my Whoa. gosh! <laughs> Our lights do that all the time. That's what, yeah. I we're so much more visual now. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and edit this so that I can. No, let I'll have that to, moment happen. Well, like, I'll have whoa. to boost the shadows and maybe. Then I'll have to did you receive an epiphany of what we should talk about? Nope. Light bulb moment. Did you? Nope. Probably Ryan Trayan though, and how much dreams Probably. Patrick has about him. Okay, don't expose me like oh that. Oh my gosh, Patrick is a. Obsessed. I, he dreams about Ryan Trahan way more than he dreams about me. <laughs> That's what you think. Um. Yeah. No. It's weird. It's, Patrick, uh, keep this PG. Come on. What? What? <laughs> oh, right. Okay. I don't get it. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Um. Yeah. It is weird. It's not an obsession though. For a while it was, but I think I've calmed down. I know. Down. It was just weird that you're dreaming about him. It is. It still is. Especially weird. when because like we were. It's not as if we were watching his videos that night or anything. No. And you just be wake up and be like, Eva, I dream about Ryan Trahan again. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Yeah, it's crazy. And like, they're getting so much more realistic every mm-hmm. time I have one. It makes me think it's a bit of a prophetic dream that someday I'll meet him. him. It's so frustrating when we see like, he's been in like England or Ireland, in Dublin or something oh like that. And gosh. like a week after the video's posted and Patrick was like, I was literally in Dublin Five that day. Or like. <laughs> Why didn't I know? I can see the back of my head. And Why everything. couldn't that I post? Happened, Why couldn't he post the story being like, maybe here in five minutes? Yeah. You would have been there. I would have been there. I would have picked him up from the airport. Yeah. That, that would have been such a good opportunity. Shout out to Ryan Trahan. Come on. I'll pick you up from the airport, babe. Let us pick you up from the airport. Oh. <laughs> Come on, babe. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Just we, took it weird. Let's play. Two, what? Let's play Ultimate huh? Frisbee together, Ryan. Yeah. And yeah. Patrick, too, I guess. Oh. <laughs> We're a weird bunch. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Um, what's your favorite movie? You know this. Oh, is it still Avatar? Yep. Avatar. Can't talk much about that. No. Lame movie. Lame, lame, lame. Um, sorry, I just I started to yawn in my mouth. Oh, I saw somebody that one of the. You never w- zoomed in that time. When you said you'd zoom in on me yawning uh, in internally. Uh, <laughs> I went to that moment. Uh, that's what I'm saying. In. I never go back and edit them. <laughs> yeah. You literally said in the video I'm going to do that. I know, but I, I don't go. I, I don't see it. Um, Unless it, there's cursing. If you've cursed in an episode, then I have to go and find where you've cursed. To oh, I should out. every time then to make no, you edit it. No, no, no. No, no, <laughs> no. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to... <laughs> you have to I'm gonna expose you. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put a parental warning Poor on this episode. Mama. Jody won't listen to it now. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. More like Brady. I, actually. Please excuse me for this woman's <laughs> profanity. That's crazy. I just had to. Someone has the mouth to. of a sailor. In our family's mouth group chat, her name is Potty Mouth. And so. yet, in my family's group chat, if we had names, it would be Innocent Little Soul. <laughs> it's too long of it. Oh, oh nickname. There goes the other one. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Just stuck me finger in me egg. Just stuck me finger <laughs> in me egg. Oh no, I'm getting chocolate on our sofa. Oh, Eva. Oops. Such a wreck. Um. Oh, do you have a question for me? What's the solution <laughs> to like our economic crisis? Oh like, god. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've even thinking about like just like that video you sent me of like Canada and like twenty 
chicken drumsticks for like two hundred dollars. Two hundred twenty four dollars. That's crazy. And even just like thinking about here, like how we couldn't find anywhere to live for so Here's long. What I it was think. So expensive. Here's what I think. Excuse me, let me finish talking. You asked me a question. Ah, you don't let ah. me finish the question. <laughs> Go ahead. Bum. Here's here's what I think. In terms of our economic crisis in the world <laughs> at the moment, I'm sure some people have heard a lot of speaking about the World Economic Forum and the Wef. idea. Huh? <laughs> I think that's the thing. Am I just making that up? Is it? The world Is that, economic you're not supposed to speak into it like that. Sorry. <laughs> like, do you not see how I'm holding it? Anyway. Um, but this idea of like a worldwide power and like this idea of like a great world reset. I'm so sorry for all my yawns. <laughs> it's so disrespectful. So, um, as Ryan Trahan would say, the Great Reset. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering where you said the Great Reset. I was like, where have I heard that before? Yeah, he is obsessed. Look and at his new tattoo, guys. Oh, oh, sorry. Go I ahead. I thought you were gonna try and say something about me flirting with you, but oh no. I'm just trying to be comfortable and casual with the viewers, listeners. Okay. Um. So some of you might have heard of this idea of a great world reset, but uh, um, there's a lot of problems with the wor- the current solution, like of a great world reset, because they just keep handing out money. No, it's basically it becomes really kind of uh, communist, and basically it's mm-hmm. like we'll we'll reset all of your debt, everything, but everything you own belongs to us. Yes. And you don't actually own anything. And it's property of now the world. Um, which is a bit problematic. Very problematic. Um, so, but my, 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 my solution is something... Hey. Pardon me. Stop yawning. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> oh, no. Patrick, you're Why so Why are you on so contagious? Like, yeah. Y- yeah. Tell me. Well, in fairness, <laughs> Tanya tested it on Rena when she was a baby. And... She didn't actually react at all, so it, it's not actually contagious. Yeah, babies are never tired, though. Babies are always tired. All they do is sleep. Um. So my solution is all, a great world sleep. reset, you wouldn't be tired. but just that's it. Did you know, so a few years ago, the Catholic Church celebrated a Jubilee Year of Mercy. Okay, hold on. You said you had a solution. What is yeah, it? Yeah, I'm getting there. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The Catholic Church celebrated a Jubilee Year of Mercy. Mm-hmm. Which typically, I think, happened every 50 years or 500 years. Something like that. I'm pretty sure it was 50. But it was this idea that all of your... Like, basically, it's like all of your sin, all of your debt. And, like, yeah, because of the, back in the day when the government was Christian and, like, we lived in Christendom, then, um, like, it was just, like, everything is just gone. Like, you're, you're scotch-free. Woohoo! Tape. So dang clear of everything. You know, mm-hmm. um, Owen Rogers reference for all of you fans out there. Um, and so yeah, so I I think that we should have another jubilee year. year of mer- so every fifty years. <laughs> That's crazy. Every fifty years, then you just are free mm. of sin, of debt. All of your debts are paid. But that's How what they're saying. That is that No, but the government is saying all your debts are paid, but now everything you own belongs to us. Yeah, but they but can't just wipe this like clean. Why? Why not? If everybody started from a clean slate, like money isn't real. Yeah. <laughs> but like money is totally just this concept and they're all just those people who have like stolen like and whole- like fraud and everything they're just going to be treated the same as the people yeah. who struggle to pay a loan yeah and that but everybody everybody it's is unjust no it's not yeah that's how god looks at us man but god is a just god exactly god just wants us because we're us he loves us so much mm. he just he's ready to wipe your slate clean wow think about that He's ready, but like think of the prodigal son. Yeah, you have to be willing. I'd say people out of stolen would be willing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't know. I don't know how the world would take that. I guess it would just be a great thing. 
Yeah. But the world is too greedy. The world is very greedy. Very It'll never. Yeah. I, oh, I don't think that happen. my solution will ever happen. I guess I was taking it too seriously. <laughs> yeah. But uh, hey, if you want to make it happen, feel free. We'll take out a mortgage just in time for that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know when. <laughs> Let me know. Hit me up. LMK. <clears throat> so that's my solution personally. I love it. Uh, uh, Jubilee year of mercy. Perfect. Worldwide. Spiritually and politically. Yep. Economically. All the things. Yeah, because like things. even I was thinking like I think about this every now and then. Like every country is in crazy debt. Crazy. Crazy. Like, but I that's what Billions. I don't understand is like, like how does that happen? That money's obviously not real because yeah, they it's don't not. have it. Well that's what I'm saying. It's not real, man. I know. That's why inflation is always happening because they print too much money. Oh my gosh, so and much. so they're just like, Oh, we've got an excess of money. So is we've that got how is that prices. like is that what sterling rate is? Is that how like countries were like ten thousand I wanna say rupees because I feel like they're worth absolutely nothing. It's that's worth, so like, racist. No, but I, that's not racist. I think that's a fact. I know. I think How that's a know? fact. Well, wow. anyway, is for, is worth like like the say ten euro. So like how many? How many rupees 10, for ten? Ten thousand rupees for ten. So euro. like, does that mean is that because because they printed way too much? And so like the likes of the UAE, are they the same? Because I think their currency is the same. Yeah, when when a currency like. Is it worth it? <laughs> oh my gosh, Patrick. When hold currency it in. isn't worth as much. So like, yeah, when, when the exchange rate is so poor, then that's, yeah, because like they've got an excess of... I see you yawning. No, I actually didn't. I, I just sighed. Over there. I sighed. Um, I sighed my little lie. Euros to rupees. Rupees. Uh, 10 euro equals 902 Indian rupees. Okay. Ten hundred. I was close rather than ten thousand. Yeah. Um ten hundred really really isn't the thing. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah, so it's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, so like that's really bad. So that means they printed too many rupees? I mean well Yeah, pretty much. Rupees. What a fun that. word for a currency. Yeah, that's what the currency it is. It kinda sounds Zelda. like a disease. Zelda they use rupees. Yeah, they do, you're right. Rubies. Rubies. Ru- rabies, that's what I'm thinking of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, that? Rickets as well. I thought of rickets. <laughs> what? Bowing of the legs. What? Rickets. Rickets. Yeah. What of the legs? It's a bowing whenever you're. Whenever there's like a bow. You know the woman know. in Dune, the one that like gets the worm blood. Rebecca Ferguson. She's probably got rickets. Why? Because <laughs> her legs are like that. Are they? Yeah. Why? <laughs> How do you know that? Rebecca Ferguson, are you sure it's the right person? Yeah, Jessica. No, Jessica? no, no, no. The one who actually catches the worm and gets the blood. Oh, the little midget lady. <laughs> <laughs> She's so small. She's <laughs> tiny. <laughs> Next to Timothy Chalamet, she looked like a little Yeah, nugget. You don't really tell because of the way that the camera angle yeah. is when she meets Jessica. But then the, my third time watching it, I, when she's walking with the worm into the water. Yeah. Then you realize you, how close to the ground she like, is. You're like, oh, she is very small. And then yeah. when you see her next to Timothy Timote. Chalamet. Did you know his name is actually Timothy? No. Yeah. It's not Timothy. Uh, or Timothy. Well, it's technically pronounced Timote. Timothy Chalamet. That's true. No, that's a fact. His parents need help. Um, Why do they call him Timothy? But, like, his parents call him Timothy. Okay. Yeah. Which is funny. Well, that's so ridiculous. So ridiculous. You're going to call your child. Oh, getting a bit close there. <laughs> oh. Okay, now I'm calling PG. <laughs> what do you say? Um... But yeah, she's I've moved a so tiny, many times in this lady. podcast. Yeah, I'm a fidgeter. You Can't are. really sit still. Well, what did you think of Dune Two? No, oh, we're getting on we're to m- this. Moving into that, apparently, really quickly, we'll just touch upon it. We'll um, excellent, excellent, soon. excellent. Very good movie. I like obviously watched the first one before you watch the second one, um, but I didn't think I'd understand. It. I thought it would, it would just be like I f- I find these movies where like people create other worlds and languages and religions and all these things it's just a lot for me i'm still trying to comprehend our current world um so i thought it would just be too much for my little brain but i was actually great and interesting and yeah what was your favorite part of the second movie 
this is about if you haven't seen the second movie. A couple of years. Probably gonna have a little bit of spoilers. Um. Favorite part. Like I feel like a key moment was like the knife fight was obviously crazy, but I also couldn't really watch it because it was too real. And it kind of really annoys me when Timothy's like, <gasps> <gasps> breathing so aggressively in Tyrone, whatever his name is, hmm? Tyad Rune or whatever his name is. Fade Rotha. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, in his face after he's been impaled, which is pretty fair. Yeah. I've been impaled, obviously. If, if you were impaled, i sure you would be breathing very heavily. I would annoy myself. <laughs> <laughs> Give myself the ache. Anyway, um, but. Favorite part? No idea. He's gone. He just yawned. That's crazy. Your face was crazy. Um, I don't have a favorite part. I'm gone blank of the whole movie. Really. Like, like oh. all I can think of is the weird parts where like the Bene Gesserit woman like seduced him, and like really weird parts sticking out to me right now. I've gone okay. blank of all precious moments. Yeah. Lady Fang. Oh, Silig- Silgard is one Stilgar. of my favorite. Stilgar. Silgard. <laughs> He's one of my favorite characters. Why? Um, I uh, admire his faith. Okay. Yeah, that's mostly it. And like, he's just willing to be a fool, kind of a little bit. Like, you okay. know, he, you know, like it takes him a while, and like he's obviously putting a lot of faith yeah. in Paul, who a lot of people are doubting. Mm-hmm. That's interesting because so many people mock him for his faith. Yeah. Yeah. Which I admire because he does it anyway. Yeah. Even in the movie, people are mocking him to yeah. his face. You know, it kind of brings uh, brings the question to light of like. I think innocence is m- so mocked these days, and I think he is somewhat like innocent and naive. Sorry, go ahead. I just was a thought. No, no, it's okay. I, I appreciate your thought. Okay. Um, but I think like because I ask myself sometimes like if Jesus mm-hmm. had appeared today instead of two thousand. <laughs> Oh my gosh, how many yawns is that? Too many. I guess we oh. should go to bed after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, if Jesus was alive today instead of 2,000 years ago um, and he started preaching, you know, and like he invited me to come follow him like he invited the disciples, like would I, would I have been like, who does this guy think he is? Yeah. Or would I have been like, oh yeah, because I think Javier or Silgar, Silgard, Stilgar is like he's just like oh my gosh this is like the signs the prophecies mm-hmm. that they all point to this guy um, whereas like in Jesus time like the high priest and all that were like oh it has to be the messiah has to be this this and this and like mm-hmm. they all expected him to be this soldier or like mm-hmm. well not they all people had different interpretations of who mm-hmm. he should be and I imagine the Fremen and all those people had different interpretations of mm-hmm. who like what they thought a messiah would look like yeah. I want it's this scrawny little Bene Gesserit son. <laughs> you don't exactly think he is messiah, yeah. a messiah. Yeah. So Silgar just... S- Sil- Silgar? Silgar. Silgar. Stilgar. Stilgar. It you're is Stilgar. Co- Stilgar, yeah. Okay. You're, uh, you're confusing me. Yeah, me too. Stilgar, yeah. So I just admire him for his faith. And like I would love to say that I would trust my own faith Instincts. enough. Do you think instincts has a part? Of instincts, po- possibly, yeah. But like so quickly, he was like, "I am ready to give my life, like mm. to pledge my life," which mm-hmm. is like, "Whoa!" Like that is faith yeah. right there, and like risk, willing to risk it all because yeah. he could have been wrong, you know. Yeah. It's crazy because in the book he's fifteen years old, Paul. Oh wow! Even crazier then. Yeah, and like when they meet, first meet, then he's kind of like, like still guards like, oh, who is this? boy and his mom out in the desert like who do these guys think they are and they're just like we'll just take them for their water mm. you know we'll just take their water yeah because like that's it's so precious. precious um what's your favorite part of dune 2 mm-hmm. it's a good question i haven't been thinking about it um cinematographically no one asked that cinematically gaiety prime what the heck does that mean it's the Harkonnen planet. Oh. The Black Sun. Oh, yeah, you love that. I think it's so cool. Just, like, the idea. Like, it's just such a creative idea. Yeah. I, like, you'd never think of, first of all, you'd never think of a Black Sun. Yeah. Second of all, 
you'd never think of what a black sun looks like yeah and what, and what, what effect that have. has yeah. on the planet you know and so the so there's part the part of the movie that's in inside, black and white he's like, talking about yeah yeah in case when anyone it, when it goes from that. color on the inside to black and white when they go outside mm. i just think that's so cool yeah it is cool um, especially because in the book again going back to the book getty prime is actually described as quite a colorful planet and like the mm. people in the coliseum type place is very colorful and people are dressed quite brightly and um, because it's a celebration so it's just interesting that the that denis villeneuve took that direction went black and white yeah that is um and then my favorite part oh my favorite part was definitely when um they're having like their big council with all the leaders mm -hmm. and Paul has just taken the uh, water of life and he so he's got like full prescience thought oh yeah and he just like comes in and he's just like he just he's like I'm leading the way now or you know, whatever he says yeah but it's just he just like takes control and not takes control is in like a crazy way of just mm -hmm. like but like owns up to who he is mm -hmm. and yeah I just think that it's he just really, shows great strength and yeah like it's crazy listen to me you yeah. will listen yeah and just like he like he can see people and people you like, can see people's hesitant uh, anger mm, and confusion yeah and then he yeah, proves he's himself like, none of you could take me on yeah literally none of and you and then everyone stands up and like Everybody bring stands it up bring out the knives i'm gonna have to come on they're alternatives um and then yeah <laughs> and then he's hard. just like in your nightmares and you you give water to the dead and yeah. you take joy in it Lisa al <laughs> I think that's so funny but yeah, yeah. your grandmother it died nine moons ago yeah it gives me shivers every time yeah I that was it was pretty crazy actually yeah. that's a great one good choice yeah thank you you're welcome um, Johnny's my least favourite character Johnny Johnny yeah she really annoys me actually just wanted to say that okay <laughs> <laughs> Zendaya on shout out to you on shout out dis shout outed in fairness I feel like she would be fine with being disliked by someone religious <laughs> you're so judgmental yeah I am you're rubbing off on me I'm not judgmental you're so judgmental that was my first impression of Patty was that he was so judgmental and I couldn't handle that because we were putting fake teams and I was like, I don't want to be on a TL, a team leader, because this guy's on staff and he knows how to do this thing and he's going to judge me so hard. I was never a team leader. Though. Well, now I know that. And I was three times now, technically, including that fake team. <laughs> fake team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I was technically the other team, your co-team leader. Doesn't count. Of that fake team. Doesn't count. Well, if you're third, if you're th that, counting that, three that, times, that, right, that. then yeah. Okay, maybe. Counts. <laughs> Wow, this has been fun. Yeah, random. I hope you guys got something out of it or just enjoyed listening to us and being a part of our... Have you looked them in the eye once? Many, many times, actually. Okay. You'll see when you're editing. I laugh and I'm like... Meh. Right. But, yeah, this was nice. We should do it again. We'll have guests sometime. Jack Elliott, we've been promising to get him on. Yeah, we definitely will have guests. Yeah. If you want to yeah, feature Peter Hearn, yeah, will when he's come visiting, back someday, and we'll finish that. If he ever part. comes to visit us, yeah, and stop studying, Peter Grant, Peter Grant, when he here, lives here with we'll us, have him on. No, not others. if there's any more time. I don't know if there's gonna be any time because you guys are filming so much. Yeah, we're gonna make a short film <sighs> or seven. One, hmm? one. But Eva is quite a good writer. We've learned. So we're looking forward to I, um, her expertise. I narrate the obvious and Patrick thinks I'm talented. Hey, hey I'll take it. Talent is talent. I'll take talent. I'm lacking. Wow. So this concludes our episode mm. of Consistently Inconsistent. What? I was going to mock you, but I won't. Good. Um, thank you guys so much for listening, for viewing. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm desperate for fame. Clout. Clout. Yes. <laughs> good uh good bookender right there. Right. Um yeah, subscribe writer. to my YouTube channel um that this is previewing on uh follow us on Spotify if you want. Pray for us. 
Hey, you just we're getting there. I'm just helping. Not yet, not yet. Um, if you have thoughts on today's episode, or if you have questions, or if you have topics that you want to hear us talk about, e- email Patrick's Podcast Fifty Five. That's Patrick's Podcast Five Five at Gmail dot com. Um, follow us on Instagram, consistently and consistent show. We don't post on there. Yeah. Shout out once again to Michaela for getting us this print. If you want to send us fan mail, DM me. <laughs> <laughs> what? I just said no, I don't don't give out her. No, oh, well you have to beep that then. And uh, if there's anything you shouldn't forget, it's to you shouldn't you shouldn't forget to check your privilege. Check your privilege. Why? Why? <laughs> Why should you check your privilege? <laughs> I don't know. Well, why should people check their privilege? Um, to stay humble. Amen. All right. Peace out. See ya. Peace out. Bye.